Carolina Fishing TV, showing you how to catch more fish. All right, folks, I want to welcome everybody to the show today. We got a good friend, Drew Getman, and got Captain Rob Coy filming for me today. We're up here to the Cape. We got here about, what, 10 minutes ago? Just seen a turtle. Seen a cobia behind him, threw out here with a, uh, using a Spro jig, but he hit it immediately. Little one, see one behind me? There's this net here, Drew. He's just fishing the net, you know, the boat. Everybody can see him. We're gonna release him. Look out. Yeah, all right. That's not what we're looking for. But that's a start. At least that's a target species anyway. Show you guys a quick rig here. We got 40 pound braid. This is the Sussex braid. Got a three ounce pro jig. And on my braid, I, I tie a bimini twist. And after I do that bimini twist, I just tie a double uni knot neck it. Real simple rig. And there's the six inch gulp curly tail that come off the jig. We're gonna be targeting cobia today, but there's a lot of chopper hatters, blue, they call them. Uh, anywhere from like the five to 10 pound range up here. Hopefully we might get some of them on top water, but they're kind of a bycatch up here right now, but. We'd come up here to, uh, come inside the inlet here to Harker's Island. We're gonna try to catch some live bait here. Got a net full. There's a lot of chopper bluefish. A lot of people call them hatter clues. What you want to do is get a lot of bait. Because you'll go through a lot of bait up here. A lot of little sharks, rays, and like I say, the bluefish. And it never hurts to chum a little bit either. Our setup today consists of a we got a 30 here with a 40 pound test on it. Run live bait a couple of these 30s. And we're gonna have a couple of these spinning rods and they're all they're rigged up with some 40 pound braid. A couple of them is gonna be a, a jig and then we're gonna rig up a couple of them with this live bait rig. You know, this one here. It's ready to put a live bait on. I, it must be the shadow of the boat or something. They're just curious fish. They'll come up a lot of times when you catch them. They'll come up right behind the motor. And you always want a rod ready. So you don't have to try to reel these up real quick. It's just a lot easier. You know, have that shad ready back there in the live well, hook him on real quick and pitch it right to him. And most of the time, he'll jump right on. It's a simple, just a, what we call a commercial bottom fishing knot. You just make two loops two loops around your line. I do it around my finger once, twice. Pull two loops off and then just go back to them over the top. Cinch it down tight. I kind of hold that tag in and I pull it down tight. Simple. Real easy. Real easy knot. This is some 85 pound test fluorocarbon leader. About five feet of it. And all we're going to do is put on about a 200 pound test barrel so using the same knot. For once, twice, over the top and through it. A little bit harder with your barrel slow because you can't hold it. So a lot of times I'll just, after I tie my knot on there, I'll pull against the two of them and cinch them down real tight. On this rig here, you know, it's just, I have a three ounce egg sinker on it and it I want to use it in my furthest one and then on this next rig I'm gonna put the four ounce on and it'd be closer to the boat that four ounce will able that bait to stay down close to the bottom and keep them tangled you want to stagger them you don't want to put both your baits out there the same distance you start making turns and stuff they'll get tangled up we just got our two live bait lines set out this is a little bit different than your normal technique up here. You can see about seven, eight boats in front of us. 
they're all anchored up. Probably run a chum bag and uh, probably, you know, fishing three rods. Definitely the same rig, same technique, but for about the first couple hours, y'all, I'm going to slow troll around here. I call a lot of these fish slow trolling away from the crowd. Now, you don't want to set your drag tight. You want to let him run with it. We're using a single, it's not like a King Micro rig. This is just a single nose hook, circle hook. So you don't want to let, it, let that fish run. What I do is, you got the drag running out right now. You just want to pull that lever up just enough to stop it. You just want just enough to stop it. Now, when that cobia picks that, picks that bait up, first thing you want to do is come here and grab the rod, point it to him, and he's off that drag. You just let him take it. Most of the time, I'd say about 10 second pause, 15 seconds maybe. But if you get a fish and he's just start screaming drag off real fast, he probably has swallowed the bait and is going to try to spit it out. So if he's really taking a lot of line real quick, I go ahead and tighten up on him to set the hook. But if he's just easing it out and kind of playing with it, let him go ahead and take it. When they really start, you know, making a real quick run, that's when we just pulled over to them. That was the boat that they were holding up the, that fish. It looked like he was close to 80 pounds. They said they had another one there. I think what they say, Rob, over 40 pounds. They've had four today. They got three in the boat and released one. They're having a real good day today. It's one in the motor. Yeah, I'm just gonna eat. You can go ahead and get that up and get it out of the way and, and get you a bait on that other rod. Not a real big fish, but this one I keep. Yeah, he's gonna be green if we put him in this boat right now. Right behind the head. Go all the way up and step back. Green still. <laughs> that's number two for the day, and that's a keeper. Yeah, you get a fish on, you always want to have a bait ready because a lot of times you'll have another fish falling. Especially when they don't make a real long, fast, quick run like that. That fish, you know, you set the hook on him and it really just tightened up on him. You notice I didn't really set the hook on him. We're using a circle hook. That way we can, we're not going to belly hook none of these smaller fish or anything. But you just reel down tight with him and put some, a, a good amount of pressure on him. That's number two for the day right there, folks. He's about 30 pounds. Yeah. That's what we're looking for, though. Man, that is some good eating. I mean, great white, white flaky meat. You don't get no fire in that on the grill, folks. I mean, that's just awesome. Another bluefish. Tide's falling and the blues have showed up. Not much for the table, but I don't need another pulling in. 
nice chop of bluefish. These things fill the, the back creeks and the sound just fill full of them. They'll go back, I caught them yesterday in two foot of water, back with top water plugs. They're a fun fight on a trout rod. After you get one of them blues, we're using this 85 pound test leader. You gotta really check it. It's got a little nick in it right there, but it's not bad at all. I'm gonna go ahead and use it again. You always check your leader. Most times you'll have to retie your hook. And a lot of times you'll you'll lose quite a few hooks. There you go, get him, get him, get him, get him, real. There you go. There you go. Come on around. I haven't seen it yet. Have you seen it? Sharp. Sharp. Little sand shark. You do have to watch these. They they have some teeth. I'm like them dog sharks we were catching that have no teeth. These to grab a hold of the baby here. It's a small one. Pick that other rod up and let's move. Can't stand these sharks. Took a hook. And sharks and them bluefish, you got to watch them. If he wouldn't have fit through that, that leader would have been chafed up. We had to retie anyway. Had a pretty good day so far. It's, it's one o'clock right now. You can see in the distance, we've had about three real good rain showers move through. The wind's picked up to about 20, 20, 25 miles per hour right now. It's a nice one. Come on. No bluefish. Hey now. Try to jump in the boat. <laughs> Maybe some teeth on this thing. He's got a mild pool. That's why you call them chopper blues. That bite anything, they're hard too. I don't know if you can hear that. Typically, about the third week in, in May, it, it really heats up here. These big females are rode up and they're coming up in the sounds and spawning. Uh, we have just a whole mass migration moving north. And I think they range, about their farthest range would be Virginia. They got them on again there? Yeah. Yeah, the guy in the back. Got another one. It's hot and heavy here right now. <laughs> I think he's dropping. Now oh, there he goes. There he goes. When he starts running good. I'm gonna flip this lever up, put some drag on him, and crank. Don't really have to set the hook with this circle hook. Just crank it. And get some tension on it. He's getting ready to run right now. There he goes. And that's all you do right there. Look at this biting. Probably a bluefish, but it could be a cobia. Walking up to the line, it's a cobia. Nice one. Nice, nice cobia. Hold on. Keep him away from the motor there. Keep him away from the motor. Folks, that's a nice fish. Nice one right there. You're welcome, Goofer. Look at that fish. This thing just come up to the top. Exploded. Big boy right there now. <laughs> you like how did you like how I passed that hog off to you, boy? <laughs> I did. And he hit the same way as them blues. I mean you just gotta treat every fish as it's a nice big Kobe. I mean. Alright, let him go. There he is. <laughs> Alright folks, that's a Kobe right there. Keep on. 
Throat pumping. You're getting right up here. Come on, short striking. All right, now lift up. Lift up. Let get him up. Friends pass off 50 plus pound coat right there, folks. You see, I. He's a good friend. You see, I said that hooking that fish and passed him off his eye. <laughs> this is our wedding wedding This is it, right here. This is the honeymoon right here. You can't even shake that head. He just bulldogging. Just warning the boat. Right here, get him up. Come on, come on. That boy right there's in the boat. Cobia fishing is is different than a lot of near shore and inshore fishing. I think the key to this is you got to have patience. You can be out here all day and then you catch two or three right in a row. That's what we come here for, folks. We got a storm coming. We got to put this stuff up and the camera gear up for a second. But bike's heating up. Why is it getting worse? That's probably a 70 pound Cobia right there. We're waiting later on. He's pretty heavy. It's probably about oh, 4 o'clock. <laughs> Captain Jeff's come out here with us. He heard about his good fight. He couldn't stand it. He had to come on. Actually, he just wanted some cheeseburgers. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> we got, oh, we got a couple bluefish on right now. Solid. Look at them in the water. This tide's just about low water right now, and they're really coming out here strong now. Can't even keep a bait in the water over five minutes. There you go. I think they bite each other after they get on the hook. Oh, nice. We're like twins. Skinny, huh? Skinny. Where to check this bait? Can't have no bait on that. Shot up. Look like brothers, don't they? Don't forget. Yeah. All right, folks. We're here. It's about I don't know 6:30. We're here at uh, Chasing Tails Outdoors, Lang Beach, official way station. We had Wade Drew's Cobia here. He ended up weighing 63 pounds. The other two were 32 and the other one was 30. We had a good day today. You know, we had uh, we released one, we caught four, and we lost two. Jeff had one on this evening late. It was every bit of this size here. He come up twice, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he surfaced probably 150, 200 yards out, and he finally shook and spit the hook on us. So. Yeah, he was a good 60, 70 pounder too. It was a real good day for a rough, overcast, cloudy day. This usually, this is pretty much they, they come in first of May, probably got the next at least two or three weeks anyway, uh, to get on a good bite like that where you can anchor down and work and we're trolling on them. And then after that, we're still catching throughout the summer. Oh, yeah. Working on uh, artificial reefs, work, working on structure and stuff like that, working uh, a lot of the uh, cans, the buoys outside the inlets and around the artificial reefs. So. Carolina Fishing TV. <laughs> All right, folks, come on, get you some. That's it. Appreciate it, you guys. Take care. Stay tuned for the next show. And, uh, Get yourself out on the water and catch a few of these big Kobe this spring.